Life, London, This Moment in June, a slideshow of Mrs. Dalloway's path through modern-day London. In the opening pages of Mrs. Dalloway, readers take a journey with Clarissa Dalloway through the streets of London as she sets about her task to buy flowers. This map outlines the route she takes from her home in Westminster to the flower shop on Bond Street. She begins in Westminster, an area that is home to the British government in the Houses of Parliament and Westminster Abbey. From her home, she can hear the toll of the famous bell, Big Ben. Many critics believe the time she leaves her home to be 10 o'clock a.m., even though Wolfe never states a time other than the descriptor mid-morning. The first time mentioned in the novel is the 11 o'clock hour, after she has returned from her errand. The houses pictured here are centuries old and could be where Virginia Woolf intended the Dalloways to live. Clarissa makes her way from her home in the heart of Westminster to St. James Park, a royal park abutting the entrance of Buckingham Palace. Serpentine Lake, pictured here, is in the center of the park and must be crossed for Clarissa to reach the other side. It's likely here where she observes the ducks and birds swimming. After exiting the park, Clarissa crosses a street known as Paul Mall. She continues down St. James's Street. The window in this building, located on St. James's Street, could be that which Wolfe refers to when she describes the men watching the car drive past. From St. James's Street, Clarissa turns on to Piccadilly, a thriving thoroughfare where she pauses a moment in the window of Hatchard's bookshop. Wolf also describes a crowd gathering at the same time, not far away from Clarissa, at the gates of the palace, with hope to see the unknown celebrity in the car pass by. Clarissa completes her task of buying flowers at Mulberry's Florist on Bond Street, a little over a mile from her home. To walk a mile through the streets of London at an average pace would likely take around 30 minutes. Wolfe takes about 30 pages of the novel to describe Clarissa's journey, which probably takes more than 30 minutes for the average person to read. Part of the reason for this disconnect is Wolf's use of stream of consciousness. As Clarissa is walking, Wolf lets us not only into Clarissa's mind, but the minds of neighbors, passers-by, and other characters such as Septimus and Rhesia. Although Wolf is careful to chart out a specific and realistic route for Clarissa, she is ultimately more concerned with the interior realities of her characters than the external realities of the journey, a concern which is a hallmark of many modernist writers.